You're listening to the Sisterhood of Limitless Living podcast. I'm your host, Dr. April Moreno. I'm a public health specialist focused on integrative wellness and autoimmune living, supporting the community of women, where I help you to live your best quality of life through being your best self-advocate. Let's get started. Welcome to this new season of the Sisterhood of Limitless Living podcast. This is season two, which I just recently decided to start as a new season. It's April. The podcast actually started in May of 2019, so it's almost a year old. But the theme of this month of April is renewal and rebirth. And so for that reason, I decided to go ahead and just start a new season here in the month of April. Also because April is my birthday month and my name of course is also April so it's just a theme of renewal and rebirth this month so that's why we have the new season I hope you like the new beginning of the podcast and also hopefully you'll like the new image that I'm working on having uploaded and ready for this episode so it's been quite a time, right? It's been quite a season and maybe rebirth doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense right now as we are going through this pandemic and we're still about to see the worst of it take place. So I know rebirth is not really the word that many people would think about at this time, but nonetheless, it is still spring season and it is really shaking up the way that we think about the world. It's really changing the way that we perceive free time, time with family. It's really causing us to rethink our schedule and our resources. It has pretty much turned our world upside down. Literally, the whole world is going through this. If you are also interested in learning more about the COVID-19 pandemic from international perspectives firsthand and hearing about public policy, public health, and culture in that intersection, I invite you to also listen in to my other podcast, which I started recently called COVID-19 Public Health Policy and Culture, and that is available on anchor.fm slash COVID-19 PPC. So I hope you are doing well with all of this stuff that's going on, taking the proper precautions. I know many of us are part of the autoimmune community, just taking those extra steps. For me, it had a lot to do with just complete social isolation. I haven't left my house for about a month now, but I make sure to do exercise. I make sure to order food on delivery. I make sure to spend time in the outdoors, in the backyard. I don't even take walks in my neighborhood. I do as much as I can to avoid any contact with people in the community. I will say that we are getting some home repairs done. My dog chewed up the air conditioner wires last week. He was trying to get through and catch a squirrel. And I guess the air conditioning wires were in the way. He chewed them up. So the air conditioner wasn't working. And you know, those of us with autoimmune conditions, air conditioning can be very crucial in the summer. So I'm glad that we addressed that earlier on in this year at the earlier stages of this pandemic. So we did have someone come and take care of that. And I actually just stayed outside of my house for like four hours after they left just to make sure the house was fully ventilated, sprayed it down mopped the floor, everything that I could just to make sure that the virus was not living in my house. On that, maybe the next episode will be on this topic of how I protect my house. It's an autoimmune condition, being an autoimmune thriver, survivor. um, How do I protect myself from COVID-19? I'll share those precautions in the next episode because I do take it an extra step. Explain what I do in the next episode. Here we go. In this episode, again, we're in this topic of renewal and rebirth because it is also spring. It's going to be Wellington's birthday. It's going to be my birthday this month. And it is just a time for complete change and renewal of the way that we think, the way that we live. And again, assessing our resources, assessing how we spend time with people that we love, community, how we spend time thinking and how do you spend time with yourself? Some people are not able to be comfortable spending all this time 
listening and hearing within to themselves. And so it's just such a change of season. No matter what you're going through, the whole world is changing at this time. This month, as we talk about rebirth and renewal, I am interviewing a few people who talk about different types of mindfulness and different types of energy practices. So a lot of it having to do with this theme of renewal. And so in this episode, we're speaking to Dee Bamford. I met her at a conference just about two months ago. I think it was in early February. And she's a wonderful person. She is lovely and she is a postpartum healer and Reiki healer. She teaches yoga, internal yoga. I actually just recently, before the epidemic started growing, I had a Reiki session with her, remote Reiki session, which she can still do. And it was the most amazing thing. I had the most wonderful night of sleep that night. It was a feeling of like a massage of the soul. It just calmed me so deeply that I slept very, very well. I was traveling for work that weekend. Just before the epidemic and before all the shutdowns and things, I think so many of us were going through this very frantic pace of travel, events, so many things to do, so many places to be. I had to call her because I was exhausted and I was preparing for this long work trip. So I'm a consultant in healthcare. I work with healthcare policy as my employment right now. I help nonprofit healthcare organizations to healthcare qualification status, federally qualified health center status. I help them with their strategic planning and things like that. That's my very formal public health full-time work as a consultant. And I had to go and travel several hours away and I was really exhausted already, just the thought of it. And so I scheduled this time with Dee for a Reiki healing session that night when I got there. And it was the best decision because I slept so well that night after all the work and travel and I was ready to just do my best the full day, the next day on the job. And it was just the perfect timing for it. So I am excited to introduce you to Dee and for you to hear about her work in Reiki and healing. It's just such a special treat to be able to introduce her to you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to another episode of the Sisterhood of Limitless Living. I'm Dr. April Moreno. I'm here to present this topic on Integrative Wellness Integrative. Today we are speaking to Deanna D. Bamford. She is a Reiki master. She's also a postpartum energy healer, therapist, and she does energy work for the community, for women in general, for the general public. I'm really excited to introduce D. Welcome. Hi, April. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm very excited. As April was saying, I am D. I'm a postpartum energy therapist. I do a lot of work with moms, especially moms experiencing perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. I'm a big maternal mental health advocate here in San Diego and a postnatal and prenatal yoga instructor. I do a lot of energy work, not only with mothers, but I also work a lot with entrepreneurs and anyone and everyone who is looking to do their own work, to look inward to begin to connect, uh, not only to others, but most importantly to, you know, within themselves. My life is a life of service, and I'm here to know how I can support your happiness. So excited that we met recently at this conference, and it was just a beautiful experience to know that you're local in the area as well in San Diego. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be in your presence and share space and energy with you. Please tell us a little bit more about Reiki. What is Reiki? So Reiki, the word itself means life force energy. Reiki treatment, we work with the energy fields. It's a non-invasive treatment. Uh, it's actually done with floating hands. I actually volunteer at a local hospital here in San Diego. And at the hospital, we do use hands on because sometimes the energy flows through uh, energy there's around us and it flows through us also. So sometimes if we're in a doing treatment, I may be in somebody's shoulders, but they're actually feeling the energy in their feet. So at hospitals, just so they know where we are at all times, uh, that's where we use hands on. It's very non-invasive. It treats the whole body. Mm. So it treats the whole person. It treats mind, body, and spirit. 
And Reiki assists a lot with the natural healing process of the body. And in a nutshell, that's what it is. But it helps so much with, of course, chronic illnesses, autoimmune, and so many others. (laughs) How does Reiki heal or how does it help people who are living with chronic conditions such as autoimmune conditions? First of all, energy flows around us and through us. Energy nourishes our body, our cells, our organs, our glands. So when there is an imbalance in our energy fields, a person may be susceptible to experience uh, disease. This can manifest in a physical form, stress, depression, infections, and you are experiencing chronic illnesses, autoimmune, other physical, emotional, or mental discomforts. One of the most difficult things to cope with as you are experiencing a chronic illness is the feeling that a person has lost control of their life Mm -hmm. and their body. Yes. As the illness progresses, one may feel more and more disconnected from how life used to be, how they used to live it. Now we have this pain, now we have this kind of holding us back. And sometimes we can become resentful because we're not living the life that maybe we see in others. And often there's a loss of independence that can feel very disempowering when it comes to a chronic illness of just repeated pain or discomfort. And then People think that that's their new way of life. Mm -hmm. But they, other than going through their own treatment, there's alternative holistic treatments. And Reiki is a beautiful, like I said, non invasive, a wonderful. And when it's being done and a person is receiving Reiki therapy, Reiki um, sessions on a regular basis, the results are just stunning. It's amazing. Some of the benefits are it helps, of course, like I said, it helps a lot with pain. Mm. It reduces inflammation. It helps with better sleep. There's a better sense of physical and emotional balance. Um, Overall, it improves the quality of life. Mm. But when we, just to touch a little bit more on that, it helps with the anxiety, with the stress, with sometimes the depression that can be very, when having a chronic illness or autoimmune disease, it can be very debilitating. So it really nourishes the entire body. Uh, There's a healthier immune function. There's not enough research around this uh, regarding Reiki effects, but however, a lot of clients have reported that after having uh, Reiki treatments on a regular basis, their symptoms have reduced. So there's less and less symptoms. Most of them, or all of them, I should say, report that the benefits have just been so wonderful in being added as part of their treatment, of their plan. So it's not to replace their regular doctor, it's to support and assist on the journey. Having a regular Reiki uh, treatment is very beneficial for anyone with a chronic illness, especially because of the pain. It really relieves the pain from the body. It would ease the stress, the depression, the anxiety, and the discomforts around feeling ill all the time. It's very relaxing. Basically, you just rest and receive. With Reiki, there's nothing that you have to do. You don't have to move. You're literally just open to receiving the healing. Your body, naturally, it wants to heal itself. So you're just giving it the opportunity to do that to be open, to receive, to allow that fluidity rather than that resistance. Because a lot of the times when we're feeling ill, we tense, we hold the breath. We're just like, oh, you know, just like, this is too much. And we need to allow that flow. So other than Reiki, you know, meditation, what other techniques and tools, there's plenty out there. Finding the ones that work for you, Mm -hmm. for your custom journey, because your chronic illness is not going to be the same as somebody else's. Two people with lupus, even though it overall kind of looks the same, it may not feel the same at all. They can resonate a lot one from the other, but it's a unique journey for each. Mm -hmm. There are some experiences of how you have performed 
Reiki on individuals with autoimmune disease, if you could. Yes. So I have a client who's up, literally up in LA. I actually never given her a session in person. Everything is remotely and it alleviates with, she is rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. and that's her chronic illness. Her pain has pretty much banished from what it was to what it is now. And it's, the benefits of her being able to live the life that she had prior to the illness in her life it has to reduce her symptoms and it's just overall quality of life enhancing that she's able to she's a mom uh, to a four-year-old and she is able to live her life the way she designed it it really helps and she has reiki every two weeks Every two weeks. Every two weeks, we do a session. Mm -hmm. And it's remotely, and it's the perfect time for self-care. I have worked with other clients that they have not out loud said I've been diagnosed as autoimmune, but they know that there is something going on that's probably heading that way. And they, aside from Reiki, they have other practices and other tools that they utilize and they feel better in a system. And when they have a treatment and then they stop treatment with me, like a Reiki treatment, they're like, I feel amazing. It mainly is the tiredness that they would feel like on a regular basis. And that is one of the things that is first eliminated because when our energy feels are depleted, you don't want to do anything. You're just like, I am energetically exhausted so balancing the energy fields it rejuvenates your whole body this is not just one little part but in it rejuvenates the entire body so that you can simply just function as the best person that you want to be and as the beautiful human being that you want to be Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more about the, the remote experience. I had Reiki <laughs> healing once, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but I would love to hear how, it, how does it work remotely, and is it exactly the same process? I'd love to hear how it works. Yes. So I would love to hear if yours was in, in person or remotely. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, so there's two ways that I work one, you know, the remotely in person in person, I have him at a massage table in front of me mm-hmm. and we're doing a uh, in person and it's an hour session. I personally do when I say everybody, I'm like, I, we designate an hour regardless remotely or in person, the actual Reiki session where I am fully connected to you and your body is for 40 minutes, but it takes the person sometimes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to wake up from Reiki. So remotely, the person will tell me where they are located, and then we set up a time that works for both. I will call them about five minutes prior. Well, prior to that, I will let them know what to expect. We will have a phone conversation for about 30 minutes, a few days prior, just so that they set up. So when you're at your home, you can set up in a space where nobody's going to bother you for an hour. You create your own ambience. So having oils, diffusers, candles, being very safe, (laughs) or just music. I will send out a playlist if they like. Playlist that I will will use. And that when I pick a playlist, I have several. I, throughout that whole day when I'm going to have a Reiki session, I'm already channeling their energy. So I will be... I will get a download of which playlists I'm going to play that night and um, send them to them. Again, also my sessions, I prefer to do them at night because that way after the person is done with their Reiki session, they can simply go to sleep and they will have a really good night's sleep. So when I do it remotely, I will have the prior conversation. I will call them about five minutes prior to the session, the day off, five minutes prior, just in case they have any other last minute question. After that, we hang up the phone. We're not on the phone hang up the phone, they lie down, they bring in the intention that they're open to receiving Reiki energy or any other intention or mantra that they would like to work with. And then they just begin to feel it. As simple as that. 
all my sessions include oracle card readings that are to support your energy. So by the time the person gets up, they have a bunch of texts from me with all the cards that I pulled. And we have the option, depending of where they are located, to either speak that day, that night, or speak the following day. And most of my clients pick speaking the following day because they just want to crash out. And the following day, we have a follow-up phone call where I share all the messages that came through Mm -hmm. and all the meanings of the cards and how they apply in their life. And all my clients have soul work. Mm -hmm. So rather than homework, this this is homework for the soul. So they have soul work because it's not like, okay, I gave you Reiki. Okay, bye, Dee. Very nice to meet you. It was nice. Bye. No, no. I continue to hold my clients and I check in. So to hold them accountable and sustain them in their energy, that it wasn't just like, okay, feel great. Bye. They have work to do because when we open Reiki, you're beginning to be open to a new way of life for yourself for the better is such a positive experience. The experience I had was it was in the daytime and I didn't actually know what Reiki was at the time, but someone offered to provide a session. It was a gift. I loved it. I didn't know what what to expect, but at the end of the session, I just felt this sense of peace from within. And it stayed with me for about two months. It was beautiful. It was just a sense of calm, core level peace. Beautiful. And the more open the person is, uh, even better. That's when it stays with you longer. Like I always say, okay, the energy that we work with today, is going to stay with you for the next three, you know, the next three days. Mm -hmm. But it can be longer if you are in that open state. If you are willing to receive, it's just limitless, really, the energy. And like you walk into a room and you feel the chills, that's your energy, you know, telling you, telling you a little something. So giving yourself the opportunity to simply receive, which is one of the hardest things that people do nowadays. It's so hard to just receive. How many times have somebody tried to open the door for you and you're like, no, no, I got it. Or they try to help you with something. No, no, I got it. Thank you. But no, I got say yes. Thank you. You know, thank you. It's a great word. (laughs) Gratitude. Accepting compliments is difficult sometimes. It is. And so with Reiki, also when we go even deeper with clients, we, I go through all the seven chakras. So we always can uncover where's a blockage or what they need to work on. Often it's worth you know, I don't feel worthy of asking for help. I don't feel worthy of receiving the help. And we really dive in deeper. And this is, you know, with some clients that we dive really, really deep. We explore, you know, what is there and how can we bring it up to light because it will be uncomfortable. But once it's up to light, you can destroy it, transmute it and let it go. So creating that space for everything new. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of other things that I work is I work with uh, toxic patterns and subconscious blockages, Mm -hmm. removing for overall enhancing of the energy fields. And I do Akashic readings also. So an Akashic reading, are you familiar with Akashic readings? I've heard of it. Uh, It was a little more. Akashic reading, it's for, it's not from like the time April was born is from the time your soul was born. So it's like a library of all your records from, it could be past life, it could be this life, it can see the future. And it's very, very interesting, but it gives you a lot of guidance. I usually work mostly with my entrepreneurs on what maybe they've been dragging a same pattern and what will not as kind of what would the future will look like, but what steps do I need to take right now that are positive and healthy for my path to continue to unfold in a much healthier and positive way. I love energy work and because I see the benefits so often. I see the benefits every time. <laughs> How can we get in touch with you? This work sounds amazing. It sounds so beneficial and needed in the chronic disease, autoimmune community, anyone dealing with mental health challenges, anything really in need of healing in our lives. 
how can we connect with you? So the best uh, way to connect with me is through Instagram. Uh, my handle is Diana, D-I-A-N-A, -A, uh, period, Curiel, C-U-R-I-E-L, period, Bamford, B-A-M-F-O-R-D. And that's one of the best ways. Um, you can also go to my website, www.thejourneyofthelotus.com, and you can find all the work that I do with moms there. And here in San Diego, if you are a mom experiencing any challenges, I am at co-create here in San Diego on Tuesdays. I do a postpartum support class, but the best way I would say Instagram. You can find me there, follow me there. And I actually have a special for your listeners. If they message me through Instagram and mention that they heard it on your podcast, you know, you can see code Reiki22. I'll give them 22% discount on a distant Reiki session. That's perfect because a lot of our listeners are around the world. Beautiful. Yes. And even the clients that I have in San Diego, they'll tell me they're like, Oh, I want a session in person. And then they're like, No, I want to stay home. They like the remote sessions because you're in the comfort of your own home and pajamas, robe, cozy, fussy socks and good to receive. Thank you so much. Sienna. Do you have any closing comments? Any closing for somebody who is dealing with chronic conditions, and they're in need of some level of inner peace, calm that they really want to achieve, any tips that you could provide them? Yes, the breath. Know that you are in full control of your body, of your mind, of what you consider your illness, your breath. And the simplest technique is just simply close the eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose, feel it in the back of the throat, into the lungs, holding it at the top. And open now, just letting it go. And watch, just observe of how that you had full control of your body just by that simple exercise. And you're not alone. There's resources, there's tools. And be reminded that you are doing the best that you can with what you know and what you have in hand. And that is enough because you are enough. What a beautiful conversation we had today. Thank you so much for having me, April. You are just a beacon of light. I love your energy and I cannot wait to see where everything goes because I just know it's going to go someplace magical. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sisterhood of Limitless Living Podcast, Season 2. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Look forward to having you join us in upcoming episodes as well, where we continue to talk about integrative wellness and autoimmune living, living our best lives, being our own best advocates. Feel free to subscribe on iTunes to the podcast. And we are also available on several other locations as well. For more information about Dr. April Moreno, you can visit aprilmorenophd.com. Take care.